What up, math nerds and mathletes? Coach Murphy here once again. You're probably thinking, what are we going to dive into next? I can't wait to hear it. Well, we're going to continue in circles, and we're going to go from looking at inscribed angles to taking a look at inscribed quadrilaterals. And they go hand in hand, because if you connect two inscribed angles, you can get an inscribed quadrilateral. And we know an inscribed angle is when the vertex of the angle is on the circle and the legs are chords. So without further ado, let's jump into inscribed quadrilaterals. So we have our inscribed quadrilaterals. And remember, quadrilaterals is a shape that has four sides, right? So if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then the opposite angles are supplementary. Opposite angles are supplementary. And as we know, supplementary means they add to 180 degrees, right? So if we go ahead, let's drop that down and look at our circle here. And if we have ourselves a quadrilateral, Right, and if we look, we technically, we can say that we have, here's one inscribed angle, here's another inscribed angle, there's another inscribed angle, and last but not least, there's another inscribed angle, right? So if we have A, D, C, and B, we could say the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C equals 180, and the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle D also equals 180. Okay? So nothing too crazy. All right, nothing, nothing too difficult, but let's go ahead and take a look at some practice problems, shall we? All right, let's look at this one right here. So, if this angle right here is 45, what must this angle be? Well, they have to add up to equal 180, so 180 minus 45 gives us 135. So measure of angle K, 135. Measure of angle J, that's opposite this angle. So 180 minus 92 gives us 88. All right? Piece of cake. We're done. <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> Obviously, it's going to get a little bit more difficult. Now, like I said earlier, remember the angles inside a quadrilateral are actually inscribed angles. So they are equal to half of the arc that they intersect, right? So let's take a look at what we're, what we're asked to find, angle P, right? So you wanna find this angle right here, okay? Let's go through and start labeling what we know. Okay? We know that. Oops. This arc right here is 90 degrees. Right? And this arc right here is 126. Now, it is created by angle R right here. 
So, 126 plus 90, 6, 216, right? Now we take that 216, we divide it by 2, and we get 108. That's angle R. Okay? Now we're looking for angle P, right? And that comes from, right, let's change colors here. Angle P right here. Okay? So if we know this from here to here is 216, how many degrees are in a circle? 360, right? So we take 360, take 216, and we subtract. 360 minus 216, that gives us 144, okay? So this arc from here to here is 144. <clears throat> now, we're looking for the angle. We're looking for angle P. <clears throat> so what we have to do is we have to take a half of 144 because remember, the angle is equal to half of the arc. So that would make angle P 72. Now, finally, looking for angle S right here. Okay. Well, we know that this is 93. We know that they add up to equal 180. So 180 minus 93. And that gives us 87. Okay. So we use what we know about inscribed angles to help solve for missing angles of the quadrilateral. All right, you're going to do the same thing in that example, right? Now let's take a look at solving for x, okay? We know that opposite angles, we know that the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle G is going to equal 180. We know that E is 68, 68 plus 9x minus 5 equals 180. So we have 9x plus 63 equals 180. We subtract 63, we subtract 63. And then we divide by 9, divide by 9, and we get x equals 13. Okay? Using what we know, solving for what we don't. All right, let's take a look at number seven. Number seven is asking us to solve for x again. So we know what this angle is, right? But do we know what this angle is? Well, not right off the bat. We have to figure it out. We know that angle N is an inscribed angle that intersects the circle here and here which means it's made up of 91 degrees and 135 degrees. So we take 135, we add it to 91, that gives us 226. So the arc that angle N creates is 226. So if the arc is 226, we divide by two, that gives us 113, okay? So we know right here that this angle is 113. So we, if we add this plus this, 15x minus 23 plus 113 equals 180. So we go through, combine like terms, we are left with 15x plus 90 equals 180. Subtract 90, subtract 90, 15x equals 90, divide by 15, divide by 15, x equals 6. Using what we know to solve for what we don't. Okay, and then let's take, lastly, let's take a look at number 9. Number 9 says if W, angle W is 5x plus 1, 5x plus 1, and Y is 13x minus 37, 
find angle. I'm sorry, labeled the wrong one. It says y is 13x minus 37. Find the measure of y, right? So we know that their opposite angles, they add up to equal 180, right? The measure of angle W plus the measure of angle Y equal 180. So we have 5X plus 1 plus 13X minus 37 equals 180. We combine like terms, 18X minus 36 equals 180. We add 36. We add 36, we get 18x equals 216. Divide by 18, divide by 18, we get x equals 12. Now we're not done. We gotta take that 12, we gotta plug it in here because we're solving for y. So the measure of angle y equals 13 times 12 minus 37, which gives us 119 degrees. So not really that much more difficult than what we were doing uh, previously, right? It's just kind of taking the inscribed angles and taking it to the next step, all right? So just remember, inscribed angles, they're angles that have their vertex on the circle. Their legs are chords. They are equal to half of the arc they intersect, right? If two inscribed angles create a inscribed quadrilateral, the opposite angles add up to equal 180. They're supplementary. All right. So any questions, please let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know, super exciting stuff. Have fun. Good luck.